On September 14, 2020, it was announced that phosphine, a common byproduct of life on Earth, was discovered in the middle layer of the Venusian atmosphere. Incredibly, this could mean that there is life brewing on Earth's sister planet. But if there is life on Venus, what could this mean for the future of solar system exploration? That's exactly what we're going to find out. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Phosphine is a toxic gas composed of one part phosphorus and three parts hydrogen. It's typically found as a byproduct of organic life forms on Earth. The remarkable thing about this discovery is that phosphine is incredibly difficult to make on rocky worlds without the presence of life. Because of this, Venus has now been added to the short list of potentially habitable worlds like Mars, Europa, Enceladus, and Titan, Saturn's most stunning and interesting moon. But just because phosphine has been identified in Venus's atmosphere does not mean that we definitely know that there's life there. For one, there's no definitive proof that life exists in the middle layers of the atmosphere, or is the cause of phosphine's existence there. Unfortunately, we just don't have much data on Venus's cloud layers, as only a handful of probes have pierced the Venusian atmosphere. Planetary scientists will have the difficult job of discerning whether or not this phosphine is being produced by organic life, or if it's being produced by some unknown process. Either way, they have their work cut out for them. Scientists are teases, aren't they? As soon as a paper comes out claiming to have found something which could be explained by alien life, someone else comes out and ruins the fantasy, usually with a paper detailing process that shows how that thing probably isn't alien life. But is that the case with phosphine? Maybe. As explained before, it's very difficult for rocky planets to produce phosphine without organic matter present. This is because it requires a ton of energy. Jupiter and Saturn have the required energy to make phosphine, and the compound has been observed in both of their atmospheres. But researchers putting forth the paper on phosphine's presence on Venus don't think that Venus has enough energy to produce it. Phosphine is also easily destroyed, meaning that some process must be producing it continually. So at the end of September, it definitely seemed like anyone arguing for phosphine being produced abiotically on Venus would have had their work cut out for them. But not long after the discovery of phosphine suggested that there might be alien life on Venus, a research paper by Nock Truong and Jonathan I. Lunin suggested that the planet's volcanoes could account for an abiotic method which might explain where the phosphine came from. Lunin is a planetary scientist at Cornell University, and Truong is a graduate student there. The abstract for the paper reads, we propose an abiotic geological mechanism that accounts for the abundance of phosphine detected by Greaves et al. 2020. We hypothesize that trace amounts of phosphines formed in the mantle would be brought to the surface by volcanism and then subsequently ejected into the atmosphere, where they could react with water or sulfuric acid to form phosphine. If Lunin and Chuang are right, it would mean that phosphides are being produced by basaltic lava activity within the planet and are being ejected into the atmosphere during volcanic activity, where it would then react either with sulfuric acid or water. But didn't scientists say that Venus lacked the required energy to produce phosphine? Well, yes, but this would be a chemical process, and one that would rely on the impurities in iron and how they react with other substances. The pair go on to explain, on Earth, one of the known processes is the production of phosphine gas by aqueous or acid corrosion from phosphorus containing impurities in iron. In a 2010 experiment, aqueous corrosion produces significant amount of phosphine gas comparable to the amount detected in natural terrestrial environments, while sulfuric acid corrosion could produce an amount of phosphine gas three orders of magnitude higher than aqueous corrosion. This might sound damning for the case for life on Venus, but we're not finished yet. In October of this year, PhD researcher and scholar in the Department of Physics at Midnapore College in West Bengal, India, Arjit Mana, along with his co-authors, presented a paper detailing how Venus may be going through a similar biological process that Earth went through billions of years ago. 
this coming in response to the discovery that Venus's mid-cloud layer seems to also contain glycine, another compound associated with life. Now, it's important to note that it's not impossible for glycine or phosphine to be produced through chemical processes. Venus is one of the most inhospitable planets in the solar system. Its atmosphere is incredibly acidic, and most spacecraft would likely melt on the surface if they're not crushed first. But in recent years, it's been argued that about 45 to 60 kilometers above the surface, conditions become quite a bit more bearable. So bearable that some scientists and engineers are urging NASA and the emerging private space industry to consider Venus as a potential place to set up human colonization, a subject worth a video on its own. Though the presence of glycine is promising and does seem to throw a bit of a wrench in the abiotic theory for the production of phosphine on Venus, explained in the previous section, it's also important to note that Mana isn't claiming that the presence of glycine is a smoking gun for life. But we can't rule it out as a possibility, at least not until more research is done on the subject. So is it possible that the phosphine and glycine are being produced abiotically? Maybe. Is there life on Venus? Maybe. We're essentially back where we started in September. We won't know for certain if there's life on Venus until we start sending probes there again. As a side note, I've done a lot of research on the possibility for human occupation in Venus's atmosphere, and a lot of sources I've checked out talk about using probes with deployable balloons to study the Venusian atmosphere, much like how rovers are used to explore Mars, but, you know, with airships in the atmosphere instead. This is because of the unique properties present in Venus's atmosphere, which basically makes oxygen float the way helium does on Earth. But hypothetically, what would it mean for space exploration if there was life on Venus? Even single-celled life? If life is eventually confirmed in Venus's atmosphere, it could have far-reaching consequences for space travel throughout the solar system. For one, NASA has certain guidelines for ensuring that we don't contaminate planets that harbor life. Venus is currently the best option for human occupation for a host of reasons I can't really get into in this video. Look forward to that next time. But a short list includes gravity, ideal pressure, and temperatures 50 kilometers above the surface, and the possibility for balloon cities. Yeah, no seriously, just wait for a video on Venus colonization, it's gonna be awesome. But all of that could change if life is confirmed. We definitely don't want to end up wiping out the only confirmed extraterrestrial life in the solar system, and human occupation of Venus's cloud layers could increase that risk unfavorably. An unintended consequence could mean that exploration and study of Venus remains limited to satellites and probes. We won't know for certain until planetary scientists can gather more data about the Venusian atmosphere. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and tell me what you think of the unfolding situation in the comments and what this might mean for space exploration in the future. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified when new ScienceGet episodes come out. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.